Hello everyone and thank you very much for tuning in. My name is Lucas and today I'll be doing a tutorial on Aglosoft EFB. If you don't know what Avlosoft TFB is, it's a, an add-on, let's say, for Microsoft Flight Simulator X and Prepar 3D, which uh, aims to replace the traditional and cumbersome flight bag, more the paperwork, the charts and everything. So as you would expect, it comes with the aforementioned aeronautical charts, weather information, checklists, uh, frequencies when you're flying on VATSIM or IVAO, and you can even create your own library of documents. So to get Avlosoft EFB, you go to, simple as that, avlosoft.com. At the very front page you can download a fully functional 30 day trial version, so go ahead and click that. It's a 70 megabyte download I think for version 1.5.1 and once you have it, it's going to come in a raw archive file, just open it up, here we go, a standard setup basically. And you want to install the data provider, this is the application which connects to FSX and feeds the data to the display unit and the display unit, well, it's a very nice user interface which shows you what's going on. If you're using a uh, network setup, unfortunately I won't go into detail at uh, this tutorial, but uh, you install data provider on the computer where you're going to be running FSX and display unit on the uh, system where you want to see what's going on, or you can install both. I'm not installing ARAC cycles because I'm using Navigraph ARAC subscription and I'm going to be updating the uh, with the new ARAC after installation. So next, uh, destination folder is alright unless you want to change it. It's a very quick install and you're done. So after the setup is done you'll see two new icons on your desktop and we're going to start by running a Velocity FB data provider. This nifty small not a good looking application is going to scan all your activated scenery in the FSX so it has a database of, of you know, what to use. If it doesn't do that, like it's doing in this case, you want to go to data and simulate a scenery data update. And you're going to have to do exact same thing when you install new scenery, reactivate, deactivate scenery so it has up-to-date information because as I said and I'm going to repeat again, it scans only the active scenery at the moment. So I'm using a thing uh, application called Scenery Config Editor, and you say have uh, quite a few sceneries deactivated, and uh, FTX stuff, FTX stuff activated. So it's going to scan these, but it's not going to scan these. So once it's done, it's going to prompt you to 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 be restarted. So click OK, and your data provider is up and running. Now, since we were in the Scenery Config Editor. If you, have a, if you use FTX sceneries or your K2000 sceneries, there are a couple of folders which don't need to be scanned. Because, trust me, there's nothing more annoying than starting the Avlosoft TFB and waiting 5 minutes for it to do all the scanning. So, there is a folder in your documents called Avlosoft EFB User Data. There's a scenery exclude file in there. If you open that, you can define folders which to exclude from scanning. So, if we go here, I've excluded from the FDX, CVX, Mesh and Custom folders. Also, because I use UK2000, I've excluded UK2000 Common Library as well. Because it doesn't have the actual scenery, it just has you know, add-ons for it, basically. So you can exclude these and it's going to cut minutes of your total scan time. So benefit of that being you're going to be able to fly that much sooner. So with that done, we can start the uh, display unit. And I already have my FSX running and uh, my data provider has already connected to the FSX so we can jump straight into what uh, this thing it can offer us. Once it's connected, root setup is always your first place to go. Uh, we're going to select a Microsoft Simulator plan. You can also find routes via VATROOT and root finder and uh, import them that way, but because I've used uh, PFBX or some of you build may use may use Simbrief, you can save the Microsoft Flight Simulator plan and just load it up. So I'm gonna load the very random flight plan, let's say from Stansted to Vilnius. There we go. Here's a whole flight plan. We have a cruise altitude, the uh, flight route in text form. Now let's pretend we're gonna be flying online, so we're gonna click this and we're gonna be flying on VATSIM, we're gonna start. 
Yep, so we now we're gonna now have update information of what ATC is available for us. That's pretty much it. So because I've had uh, Sunset Scenery enabled, it has up to date stands and the taxiways. And if I click this icon right here, this little airplane here, it'll show me where I'm parked. So let's say ATC gives me instruction to go to Holding Point Golf 1. I know it's here. That's the drawback of the EFB. It doesn't show the holding points, but you can use some common sense or look outside the uh, cockpit window to see where you're going. I know it's going to be this way. Also, if you're in a very big airport and it's terribly confusing, you can just go select taxiways. And we're going to be taxiing to runway 04. And I know we're going to be taxiing by a golf, so it paints it for us as well. If you were, let's say, at stand 5-2, you would select Charlie, Juliet, and Lima. And it's just going to show you this purple path all the way. So it's, it makes it very easy to taxi. Now, here, it's going to, this thingy right here at the top is going to be active throughout the whole journey. These are the active ATSIM controllers. And another cool thing is right click on any frequency, active on COM1, and you switch to that frequency. You don't have to change your views to the comms panel, dial in the frequency manually. Right click and you're on the frequency. Now this is pretty much the ground view, there's nothing much to it. Uh, if you have traffic option activated you'll be seeing other traffic as they are as they are moving around. Now we're going to go to departure view and this is where the electronic flight back really comes into it. It's this screen we're interested in. We're going to choose our uh, standard instrument departure so you can overview them. We know we're departing towards east and we can see only Clacton departures are applicable to us, so select Sid. I'm going to use the runway 04, and we know it's going to be Clacton 40 departure for us. Here we go. It's activated, it picks up the altitude restrictions and speed restrictions from the Navigraph file, so you know you have them more or less right. It doesn't hurt to double check with the real charts, but uh, it's a good way to go. So if we're going to start flying, we're going to see our little aircraft move along this line if we loaded the flight plan correctly, the SID correctly into the FMC. And route view is quite similar as well, it shows you all the uh, all the waypoints all the way across our journey. VORs come in as well, I mean you have plenty of customization options right here at the bottom. NDBs, fixes, ring, compass, alternate airport, wind information which shows up right here if we're flying and then the traffic information. Now let's say we are nearing our top of descent and we're going to start our descent planning so we're going to go to arrival page and uh, we're going to select a star. Simplest way to do is by doing the star overview. We know we're arriving from the west and we see that we're going to have Irka 2 Bravo 2 Alpha to choose from. So select star now because we're very far away we don't have actual information of the wind once you're going to be close it will show you which runway the winds favor well let's say it's going to be 0 2 we're arriving from Urkel so it's going to be Urkel 2 Alpha arrival and it paints it right here for us for approach the same thing if we don't have an ATC we're going to be uh, doing a transition approach with uh, yeah we're going to be doing transition approach if ATC is on you can expect vectors but regardless it's going to be ILS approach let's say and let's say those there's no ATC and we're going to be using this transition. Yeah, it paints it very nicely for us and if you see here, you have your very nice approach profile as well. Same with uh, localizer frequency, approach course, uh, decision height and the length of the runway. So it's, it's very nice and uh, well if you're flying something lighter, it shows you ground speed and the equivalent of rate of descent and how much time it's going to take you. That's the very gist of it, if you come to ground this is not up-to-date view, it's the default FSX scenery. You have the taxiways as well, so if we're going to land at runway 02, you can expect to go through Vicate on Alpha. Now, if you just open up ALOS of DFB and you want just to, you're not going to fly, but you want to check, you know, I'm going to be departing from Stansted, I want to see which tax, which, uh, which stand should I choose. So, uh, airports, all airports, and can put any airport in the world well, let's go for London City in this case and this will show me the ground layout of the city I mean we can go approach select approaches view up available approaches from London City as well 
Same goes for the departures from London City. Yeah. It shows us everything. So that's that would be the very, very basics of it. Uh, one last one last thing I forgot. It, sh it shows the transition altitude. For Santa is 6,000, we all know that. For Vilnius it's 5,000. And it's right there from the arrival charts onwards for the arrival. So it's very easy to... Very, it's, I mean, it's very helpful addition. I have been stammering long enough. I think I'm going to end this very brief overview right here. Uh, if you have any other questions, if you think I haven't covered anything, or if you think I, you want to see something else regarding Aerosoft EFB, or anything else regardless, please drop me a note right here under the chat box, or send me a Twitter, or at Lucas underscore FSX, or Facebook, Lucas FSX. So, thank you very much for tuning in, everyone. I wish you a nice day. Bye-bye.